yeah. I love my HBCU. And bar? I love it, love it. I love it, love it. I love my HBCU. And man. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. Man. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I tune into the ACCU Sports Lab to see if my team won a loss. If they lost, I'm quiet as a mouth. But if they won, keep tab. Uh, I'ma do the dab, yeah. Dr. Cavill, he know what he be talking about. Mike and Charles, they know what they be talking about. They can press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they won a loss. Yeah, and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir. And pay attention, cause he gonna teach a lesson. This is Dr. Bill inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Mike Washington is out on assignment. I think he's doing some practice re- for Prairie View's homecoming this week. <laughs> Recognizance or something he talked about. I, I don't I don't know. But he says he'll be ready Thursday, but he takes a deep dive and he goes in. Some special thing he does, preparing to be able to run around the yard a couple of years, and I think it's a little more challenging than it was before. I added the last part. He won't tell you that. I added that. That's me. But with that being said, welcome to episode 452 of Inside the HBC's Plus Lab Radio Show, the podcast. The show that's covering the sporting HBCU dash for all things HBCU sports. From institutions large and small, from the NEIA to the NCAA, we share insights and information on the HBCU sports culture. HBCU athletic aesthetics facilitate the story of HBCU athletic programs and the business of HBCU sports. I'm your host, along with my co-host, Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. We're filming from our home studios and sending a signal live to KCH 1230 AM studios with the Texas Radio Hall of Fame. Ralph Cooper in the beautiful home of Texas Southern University from Houston, Texas. Multi-Hall of Famer Ralph Cooper. With that being said, Charles, how are you doing today? Doing well, Doc. Another great uh, action packed weekend, and, and now we're right into the thick of things. But we got a we got a champion uh, crown this past weekend. Mm. You, good fastball lead up to that because we're gonna ask Brandon how he's doing, and then we're gonna take a quick break and come back on the other side. We're gonna see if we can bring in the interview. See if we can bring <laughs> in a champion. Oh. With that being said, Brandon King, man, you hot and heavy, man. You got the deal to a big time <laughs> show. Huh? Are you ready for prime time? You ready for prime time? HBCSports.com. Writer over there, sneaker king, as you do all these different things, man. Welcome <laughs> to the big time. You ready? You started off all that mess. With ready. State. So since you're doing all that, we're gonna get you. And and you talked about the states, man. I'm gonna have to cut you. How you doing, <laughs> man? I just wanted to make sure that you know they was gonna get there. That's all. I was I was trying <laughs> to help facilitate. Me. Coach Simmons does not need any help. But I, <laughs> with that being said, we're going to take our first break and come back on the other side. Without further ado, we want to get to this interview. So stick with us. We'll be right back after this break. And we're going to get right into it. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service. Slowburn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge. Featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website, www.slowburnwaco.com. That's www.slowburnwaco.com. T Madden and Associates is a sophisticated and experienced law firm located in your neighborhood. We're turning injury to cash. T Madden and Associates obtained almost $2 million for my injury. They turn my injury to cash. Now, we can't guarantee how much your injury is worth, but we've recovered millions for our clients. Call T. Madnet Associates at 833-PAID-123. That's 833-PAID-123. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they're going to tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah, and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes, sir. and pay attention because he's going to teach a lesson. This is Dr. Bill inside the HBC Sports Lab. I promise you, a big one. We got a big fish, a big dog, big snake, I guess I should say, really. <laughs> Coach Willis Simmons, how you doing? Man, I'm doing well. Uh, happy Halloween to everyone. For, for all those yeah. that are under rock, 
head coach of the Eastern Division champions, Coach Willie Simmons. Congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, I know you're really tame on that. You got a lot more work and plans that you want to do and get done. So, But, you know, life is too short. We do have to celebrate the small things in the moments. Um, and that's the only reason I wanted to bring it up to your credit. Uh, you got it done really before November. As you said, appropriate to everybody. Happy Halloween. Uh, and I'm dressed up. Up as a professor, just so you know. <laughs> you got the Halloween colors on, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> no coach, black, orange, um, orange and green, orange and green. There, there you go, there you go. In all seriousness, how did it feel? I mean, there were a lot of things that had to come together. Most importantly, you wanted to play well. And with that, you wanted to come out with a victory. You got the victory. In most ways, I think in uh, most people's estimation, you say you played well, pretty well. I'm sure the things that you always want to correct as the ball coach there, shotgun Willie Simmons, for those that don't know. Um, you also obviously happen to be on homecoming. So a lot of people are there more than uh, just usual when you have a really good crowd uh, and brag, as y'all brag differently, as y'all like to say. Um, and then on that, it worked out that Alabama State, State the Hornets beat Alabama and the Bulldogs, which meant uh, in terms of separation wins or losses, they can't catch you with two games left, so you win the Eastern Division. How did you feel uh, after all that, and how did your players feel and coaches? Yeah, it was a, a, a great week just all together. You know, homecoming at Family is always a festive week, a lot of activities, a lot of uh, community um a lot of alumni engagement events and those type of things. So just to see everyone back and, you know, enjoy what FAMU has meant to so many people is always a great feeling. And, uh, you know, the football game obviously had a lot of meaning. Uh, more than anything else is conference game. Even though it was a cross-divisional game, you know, every, every game counts in our conference. So just wanted mm -hmm. to make sure we continue to control our own destiny. That's something that we, we've talked about uh, since we started this season. And, you know, we were able to do that. Uh, leading up to that game, and uh, we challenged the guys to block out the distractions of homecoming and all the things that, that come along with it and, and play a complete football game. And I thought that we probably played our most complete game. And, uh, you know, it was great to get the big win. And about midway through the fourth quarter, um, I was alerted that Alabama and them had lost. And so we knew going into the game that was a possibility. And, um, you know, so once we got word, it, it was a great overall celebration. You know, they posted it on the, on the video board and, you know, Rattler Nation, 3,000 people were able to see that we were officially the East Divisional champs. Uh, and it was just a great feeling. You know, a lot of hard work, a lot of sacrifice that went into it. And just happy for the guys. It wasn't about me in that moment. You know, never, never is. It's about the players. It's about the coaches. It's about the staff, uh, this alumni base, my administration, everyone who bleeds on your green. You know, because this, this has been a long time coming. And there are a lot of people that are poured into this program. And to see it all come together and, and us have the season we're having. Uh, is a testament to, to to all those sacrifices. Before I pass the mic and let these gentlemen get in here and ask some questions as well, I got to ask this from the framework that uh, I know you are a scholar in your own right in terms of what you came out of undergraduate. Academics were serious. Degree in marketing. You understand that platform and what it means to put all that together. There's another conference over there in the MEAC, North Carolina Central, They've been kind of fighting one and two. They did it. They finished things last year, reigning uh, champions. And they really showed up um, last Thursday against South Carolina State. Coach Buddy Pugh talked about he had to be reincarnated and come back. Two of the great programs that he was looking at, the folks doing it right, he wished they had their cause. Was Coach Trey Oliver, North Carolina Central, Coach Willie Simmons at FAMU. And I know you can't get into playing this over, but is there a little part in you back that watches and see what they do and say, hey, not only do we want to play well, but we also need to kind of make a statement, top 25 FCS, one and two. Can you at least get in that a little bit? <laughs> well, you know, obviously, first and foremost, uh, and I think I echo the sentiments of Coach Oliver as well. You know, we have the utmost respect for Buddy Pugh. You know, he's, he's the godfather of us all in, in this profession at the HBCU level. Um, has done it at an extremely high level for a long time. And uh, what he's been able to do there at South Carolina State uh, is unprecedented, really. When you look at the NFL players he's put together, the championships, um, you know, just the program that he's built. And so it's always um, great to get respect from 
from from those that you look up to. And I think Coach Pugh has a ton of respect for, for both uh, Trey and I. So, um, you know, but as far as just the uh, <laughs> the overall uh, black college landscape, of course, you know, I watched the game on Thursday and they, they uh, Central played a great game, you know, probably their most complete game. And I know the nation was watching. It was an ESPN game. So they made a statement. And, uh, you know, in the back of my mind, I, I kind of said, we need to make a statement as well. And I thought, <laughs> uh, with the yeah. big win on Saturday. So we're, we're, we're right there, one and two in the black college race, you know, depending on who you ask, who's one, who's two. But um, right now it's, it's kind of setting up to possibly be a, a, a in Atlanta for the Celebration Bowl. And um, we both should have a lot of football left to play. So it's too premature. Yeah. To talk about those things now, you know, but uh, midway through the season, a little bit over the midway point, um, I think there's no question that we're the top two teams uh, in all of HBCU football. I told you, man, I was a scholar. The football genius, two great coaches answer. Touched on it just a little bit. Yeah, you let us do that. You let us play all that up. You keep doing the work. We'll do the other side. Charles, go ahead. You know, Coach, you mentioned there's still a lot of football left to play, but uh, I'm a, just following behind with the, the scholar theme. I, I, you, I know you're well aware of, of uh, the, the history and uh, the history of FAMU and how important is it uh, with regards to uh, coming over into the SWAC and this being uh, football's first, you know, uh, divisional championship, uh, uh, the history of that in terms of the, the great history of Florida A&M football. Yeah. You know, when you, when you work at a program or play for a program like FAMU, it's very, very difficult, almost impossible to achieve a first, <laughs> you know, you look back over, over the, the hundred or so years we've been doing this, um, championships, NFL players, you know, national players of the year, uh, you name it, you know, it's all probably been done, you know, at, at this institution. And so uh, changing conferences, obviously uh, winning our first divisional title in, in program history in the SWAC, uh, it, it, again, it's a milestone. You know, it's something that uh, can never be taken away from us. You know, we can always say we're the, we're the very first uh, Eastern Divisional champ in the Southwestern Athletic Conference uh, for this program. And so it's, it's a huge, it's a huge accomplishment. Um, obviously, it's not all we want to accomplish this year. You know, we want the narrative to be that we finished it, that we achieved all of our goals that we set out for ourselves this year. And so far, we've hit them all. And so, uh, but we're, you know, we're not looking at all, all of those things right now. We're not looking at the big picture right now. We're looking at this weekend, trying to be one and zero coming out of Huntsville on Saturday. Um, you know, we've had two great, great days of preparation, and uh, we're looking to have a third and a fourth. And uh, so again, you know, I, I, I try to make sure that our team understands that we cannot lose sight of what's important. You know, it's the little things that matter. They'll take care of the big things. And, uh, you know, that's for the fans, that's for media, that's for everyone else to kind of count things up as we go. You know, where we, where we stand, the rankings, uh, the accolades, you know, we'll let other people count those up. We'll just keep keeping our head down and working hard every single day. And then at the end, like I said, we'll rest on December 17th, hopefully and count up all our chips then, and then look back and enjoy the season that we've had. But right now, we're in the midst of it. it, it it's, it's too much at stake for us to start patting ourselves on the back and resting on our laws about what we've accomplished so far. Sure thing. Yeah, we'll do all the padding. Brandon King, <laughs> go ahead and follow up. <laughs> good, good evening, Coach. Yeah, good evening. Have you found – He's uh, new, uh, He's new to this, so we're still working on his camera feed, you little document. We'll get it right. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get my my lighting together, but we 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 gonna make it do what it do. <laughs> he ain't making no money yet. I gotta. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't. A I don't little have step a above the intern, coach. We <laughs> call him adjunct professors the way we call him on the show. He's working on it, man. So, so I'm over here in the copy room. That you don't have <laughs> copy room. <laughs> but I did want to ask. Uh, obviously, comparing from from last year. Um, to this year, you know, obviously, you know, kind of chasing those Tigers down in Jackson. And then as opposed to to this year where, you know, you came into the season kind of every, the team that everyone would be looking as the team to beat. So have you found it different being the hunted as opposed to being the hunter and, and getting everyone's best shot every every week? Well, in the aspect of giving everyone's best shot, you know, we've kind of always felt that. And uh, I constantly remind our football team um, that there, there are multiple reasons as to why that's the case. You know, one, you know, we, we were members of the Mid Eastern Athletic Conference, you know, for forever. And, and there's a, there's a, a, a 
just call a spade a spade. You know, the, those two conferences compete against each other. You know, which one's the best? I mean, you got a celebration bowl, you got me X Y challenge. Um, the bragging rights, you know, as a which conference is stronger. And so for years in the SWAT, they've heard, you know, the MEAC thinks they're better than you. I was a part of the SWAT for a long time, so I understand the the how the feeling about the MEAC is. There's a mutual love and respect there, but there's also that kind of, you know, back and forth banter about which conference is stronger. So you add two teams from that conference to the SWAT. Well, you got, you know, 10 member schools over there saying, okay, we're not going to let these MEAC guys come in and, and run through the conference. You know, because, again, that would push that narrative that, hey, me act stronger. They can take two teams and bring them in the swag and just run through it. And so for that reason, I think every team wants to really, really put it to us and those little guys down the road in Daytona. And so, you know, that's, that for that reason alone, we're going to get everyone's best shot. And then the second reason, which I remind our team of all the time as well, is that Route the Nation is going to write a ton of checks for us to cash. They're going to talk. <laughs> as, you know what? On these fat boards. <laughs> Out publicly, we we say we brag different. Oh, we do. And so, I'm gonna <laughs> give a lot, of, yeah. a lot of bulletin board material to to, to those uh, teams that we're gonna play over the weekend. So you know, right again, on long in the swag. Perfect. I'm telling you, it, that that part we fit right in. Now we walk right into <laughs> the trash talking central, and uh, we can track. We can talk trash with the best of them. But you know, but for those reasons, it's always gonna be bulletin board material, and it, it's not coming from the coaches. It's coming from fans. It's coming from alum. You know, and, and that, that that all adds to the pageantry. But whenever you have that type of rabbit fan base, you're going to get a, a, a coaching staff, a team that really wants to stick it to that team. So, you know, we know every week we're going to get everyone's best shot, no matter what the record is, no matter the venue. We feel like everyone's going to be gunning for us. And now that we're sitting on top of the mountain, even more reason, you know. So we have to definitely be on our P's and Q's and prepare for that every week because, you know, even teams that have had subpar records, they've come in against us and, and hit us in the mouth early. You know, we withstood it, thankfully, you know, but Mississippi Valley, Texas Southern, you know, we're going to those games as heavy favorites. And before you know it, we're, we're either down or playing in a, in a dog fight. So, you know, we, we I think we started to mature past that. And definitely last weekend we came out really, really strong and hopefully we can keep that moving forward as the season goes. But, yeah, I, I think the FAMU is always going to be that team that uh, that gets everyone's best shot every weekend. I saw him follow up also with the little boys down the street. I, I think the down the street. I think I heard that slug too. Charles, you want to follow up? Yeah, and, and I actually want to uh, follow up from this standpoint. Uh, you, you're widely recognized, offensive guru, but I want to talk about dark cloud defense. And to me, almost being sort of the backbone of this team mm -hmm. uh, uh, during the course of this season. Uh, tremendously impressed watching them throughout the course of the season. But what has been kind of the secret to the sauce of of, of sort of uh, where you are with regards to uh, where you are with uh, with this program? Yeah, well, you know, obviously I cut my teeth in this profession as an offensive coach, you know, played quarterback and you know, coach running backs, uh, became an offensive coordinator pretty, pretty young. You know, and I've been calling plays now for the last 15 or so years. But, you know, I, once I became a head coach, you know, I really – uh, began to look holistically at, at our football team. You know, it's not just let's go out and outscore everyone. Let's play complimentary football. And I truly believe that championships are won on defense. And how do you have a strong defense? Well, it starts with interior defensive line play. So we really made a commitment here to go out and, and build not only depth, but, you know, talent at the defensive line position. And when you look at our roster, you know, we're three and a half deep. You know, we have seven guys on that interior defensive line that can be in the game at any time. And, and there's no significant drop off uh, at either one. You know, there's about five or six defensive ends that we can roll in uh, and still have production. And so when you can be deep up front, it really allows Isaiah Major, Johnny Chaney, those linebackers to roam. Uh, we're always going to be fast and athletic in the back end. We're in the state of Florida. So, you know, we look for speed, oversize, and just try to get athletic in the back end. But it really starts with just the attitude of, of our defense, all led by uh, head coach of the defense, Ryan Smith. You know, he took over in 2021, and you know, his philosophy was simple. You know, you got fast guys, let them play fast. Don't handicap them. Don't try to do too much. Keep the scheme, the scheme simple and allow the guys to do what they do best. When you have a guy like Isaiah Land who rushes the pass as well as anybody in the country, let them rush. And that's all he has to do. Let them rush, and we'll play the run on the way to the quarterback. You know, you got a couple corners, let them play man coverage. You got linebackers that can run. Don't ask them to be guys that sit in the box all day long. You know, let them go east and west, run sideline to sideline. So we really do a great job of playing to the strength of our defensive guys 
but then also recruiting to how we want to play. We want to be a fast, aggressive defense. We're not a big pressure team. You know, we don't just sit back there and blitz all game. We want to keep everything in front. But if you're going to do that and play quarters coverage, cover three, you better have a defensive front that can hold up against, you know, tight ends, um, big personnel groupings. And fortunately for us, we've been able to accumulate that. So I think all of it starts with our philosophy, but the defensive line really sets the tone for us. And when those guys play well, uh, it's really, really difficult to move the ball against this bunch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to your point, uh, overall, eight games, uh, was it 15.3 uh, a scoring average? And then in the conference, you drop it to 12.3. Uh, less than two touchdowns a game speaks to volumes in terms of what that defense has been able to do over the season. Let's get back into it and follow up in terms of this game coming up. Get back to, to the business at hand. Enough celebration. Uh, you have Alabama A&M Bulldogs, and what sticks out to me is the last time you went up to Huntsville, you had to come from behind. There's some things that you were doing uh, in that matchup. Uh, but with that being said, Alabama A&M has a pretty solid defense too. What are some things that you look to get done against the Bulldogs of Alabama A&M this weekend? Yeah, well, um, you know, it starts off, and, and this is every week. This isn't specific to Alabama A&M. You know, for us, mm-hmm. and I just talked about it on the defensive side, but for us it starts with with up front. You know, we have to be able to establish the run. The last two games, uh, we run the ball extremely well. You know, 250 yards against Texas Southern, you know, 180 yards on 20-something carries last week against Prairie View A&M. And so when we can run the ball effectively, you know, every back average over six yards a carry, you know, it really, really opens the offense up. We've shown – you know, across this, uh, throughout this season and throughout really our tenure here, that we can throw the football. You know, we can throw it probably as well as anybody in our conference. And so if we can run the ball as well as throw it effect- effectively. It really, really makes it difficult to stop what we're doing. And so it all starts with up front, um, how we handle their movement. They're a team that likes to move around a bunch up front. They'll stem, they'll line up in a three down look and then shift to a four down, line up in four down, mm-hmm. shift to three down. Uh, they try to do a lot to, to force you to communicate. So for us, it's going to be imperative being on the road that we communicate well, that we identify their fronts, know who we're comboing to. And then at, at running back, we got to be patient and take what they give us. You know, the one thing we got to prevent, the last two years we played them, we put the ball on the ground. You know, we've had quarterback, running back fumbles both years we played them. One for picks, uh, uh, scoop and score in, in 21, and then one a turnover in the short field uh, last season. So that's one thing we got to stay away from protect the football, be able to run it, uh, and then just be efficient, get first downs. Uh, from a defensive perspective, it's simple, stop the run. Um, you know, Xavier Langford has been really, really effective running the football this year. And whenever you have a quarterback that can run, it creates an extra element uh, for your defense to have to be mindful of. So definitely got to understand what they're doing. They, they run a lot of different formations, a lot of looks. Um, they're very, very multiple in how they try to attack you. And so you know, both sides have their hands full with being forced to communicate forced to play fundamentally sound and uh, and do the things it takes to win. And so it's a great challenge for us. It really is. Been on the road again. Uh, my last true road game this year, um, and we've shown that we can win on the road. But, you know, we definitely, especially now that we've locked up the division, got to make sure, again, that we don't go in there, you know, full of ourselves, taking this team for granted, that we go in with the same fire and, and, and venom that we've shown, you know, this season when we knew that we were playing for something. Oh, yeah, snakes are dangerous when they're doing fire and venom. <laughs> but, you know, that, that that does make me ask a question. I'm going to ask a question as a nervous fan. Uh, situationally, uh, does 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 the philosophy change? Do I get to see more second and third teamers uh, this upcoming week? Or it, it is is the game is what it is? So what's the philosophy there? Oh, no, the philosophy is to win. You know, we're going to Huntsville to, to win the game, and we're going to play it to win. And, uh, you know, there's still, like I said, all we've done is sold, is sold up the East. You know, we're, we're still playing for the host, the, the, the SWAT championship game. And, of course, yeah. you know, obviously being a Jackson fan, how important that is to be able to host mm-hmm. the championship game. I think it's a great um, benefit in the conference that the, the team with the best record gets to host. And so that's still out there on the table. You've got two teams on the West, you know, who have one loss. Now, they're playing each other this weekend, so obviously that won't be the case after this week. But – Again, you know, we we got two conference games left. Um, they have one loss. So you do the math, you know, we don't take care of business. Uh, we may play in the game. We play in the game, but we may not host. So we have to go into this weekend with the mindset of we want to host. And that means taking care of business. If we win this weekend, I think mathematically we're guaranteed to host a SWAT championship game. 
And so, no, this isn't a game of, hey, let's play the starters for a little bit and let's get them out. You know, now, maybe next week, you know, we're playing a non-conference game that really doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. But in conference play, you know, I don't ever think you can take the mindset of trying to be, you know, cautious and, and pull starters. If there are guys that are injured or uh, that are banged up, that's different. But no, nah, if you got healthy guys, you play them as much as you can and you do what you need to do to win the game because we, we got a streak going, we're playing good football, and uh, I, I think you want to keep that momentum as much as you can. Understood. Great context there. With that, Coach Simmons, we're going to let you go, but before we do that, we allow um, you to have the last word. Anything that we didn't ask you that you want to get out to the masses, particularly your fans, family? Well, you know, obviously, you know, just excited about where we are. Uh, Route the Nation has been, you know, strong all season. Uh, the March 100 will be in attendance this weekend up in Huntsville. So I know that will um, entice our fans to, to make the trip up to Huntsville and, you know, see our band go toe-to-toe -to -toe, uh, with Alabama a ms band. So it's just, you know, I think that's one of the beauties of, of, of SWAC football, just the, the, the pageantry, um, the halftime shows, you know, all those things. So, Again, just a great brand of football that we're displaying. Um, I think the conference is in, is in great shape, a good footing, a lot of really good matchups this weekend. So, you know, you guys do a great job of highlighting the SWAC and HBCU football. And I think the nation is starting to take notice uh, of the brands that we put out there. You look at, you know, Central and FAMU and now even Tennessee State, you know, creeping in that FCS top 25. So the more that we can get that national recognition, um, I think it helps our respective institutions recruit better. Um, it helps us with alumni giving, uh, with exposure, you know, and all those things. So, again, thank you guys for what you do. You know, I really appreciate, you know, all the coverage. Um, I appreciate, you know, just the love and the passion and you know, look forward to seeing, hopefully seeing you guys in Tallahassee. There's some pretty good steak restaurants in Tallahassee, Doc, so you know, I'll be uh... – <laughs> Coach Simmons, uh, I've booked my stuff, you know, if you can – until you do your side of it, I honor my side, and I'll be coming in wins if we can square it around. We'll make it, uh, make it work. Cause uh, you're right. I I, I got to get past this fact that a steak is old. We got to make sure we close this out. <laughs> this has not been a good look. People start trying to ask questions. Uh, come in, I, I, steak? I, I, can, I can say you're not a, you're not ducking it. I will say that you're not ducking <laughs> okay. it. Because they haven't changed the square <laughs> up yet. So. Hey, and thank God I'm not part yeah, of so You gotta give me coach a steak. <laughs> hey man, you know, I <laughs> yeah, hey, well, you know I appreciate you guys, man. Uh, a lot of love, a lot of respect. What y'all do, man? Oh, so much, I, I much love, much Thank respect. You, we appreciate what you bring to the conference, what you've done for the conference, what you will continue to do. More importantly, for not just fam, you uh, and the alumni over there, but also most importantly, those students and the coaches that you're around. We appreciate that. With that yeah. being said, we're gonna take a last break. Come back on the other side. We're gonna get into it. And you heard it. The March 100 will be in Huntsville. You know, on Thursday, we release our band rankings. It sounds like they want to get back in the business of being in the bands. They're going to get on the road. I like That's what we judge here. We'll let them do the HBCU championship. We'll mix that into there, too, because they get graded on that side. We just talk about competition. Marching sport? Y'all call it. Not me. Just letting you know. We'll be right back after this break. Thank you, Coach Simmons. Great job. When you're looking for the latest information on Southern University sports, the Southwestern Athletic Conference, and HBCU athletics, there's only one place to go. Tune in to the Carlos Brown Show, exclusively on the Black College Sports Network. There's a shot. shot so that might be. It could, it could be. Right field. Grand slam. What a shot. That's how you get hot, young fella. Thank you guys for what you do for HBCU athletics. This is a fantastic avenue for, for, for all of us. This is our ESPN, so we, 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 we love what you guys do and all you guys at BCSN. We really appreciate what it is that you guys, you guys do for us. You see, Head & Shoulders has a scalp shield technology, protects against flakes even between washes. It's never not working. Kind of like us. We're never not working. Number 15? That's my rub. Ooh, nice. Never not working. Never, ever, never, ever not working. Welcome everybody to Juneau, Alaska. I don't like this one. Me neither. Let's get out of here. Dandruff protection that's never not working. Head and shoulder scalp shield technology. Charmin Ultra Soft has so much cushiony softness, it's hard for your family to remember. They can use less. Sweet pillows of softness. 
This is soft. Holy Charmin. Oh, excuse me. Roll it back, everybody. Sorry. Charmin Ultra Soft is so cushiony soft, you'll want more. But it's so absorbent, you can use less. So it's always worth it. Now, what did we learn about using less? You gotta roll it back, everybody. <laughs> we all go. Why not enjoy the go with Charmin? For 200 years, Montgomery, Alabama has been making history by people who had the courage to stand up for change. Today, this riverfront city has been reborn, embracing the past and looking forward to the future. From a national memorial for peace and justice to the stage of the Alabama Shakespeare Festival, this is where history was and is made. We are proud to call Montgomery home, and together, we can be the change. I'm returning to Clinton, Paris, and Tampa's my community. I grew up here, went to school here, and my wife and I make our home here. What makes Tampa special are its people. So when I represent someone injured in my community, it's personal. Call my office and speak to a real lawyer and not some referral service. I will fight the insurance companies to get the settlement that you deserve. At the law office of Clinton, Paris, we take the pain out of being hurt. It's never too early to plant the seed, to share the tradition, and instill a sense of pride in your HBCU with your little ones. HBCU Pride and Joy Children's Boutique helps you share your school spirit with a wide selection of adorable kids' apparel and accessories officially licensed from your favorite HBCU. Visit HBCUPrideJoy.com and follow us on all social media at HBCU Pride Joy on Facebook and Twitter. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah. And who the ball, ball, ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir. And pay attention, boy. cause he gon' teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Mills inside the HBC Sports Lab. Look at Brandon King. He's moved from adjunct to visiting professor. Good job. <laughs> Good job. With that being said, we're gonna get in to the top seven mid-major rankings in week number eight. We're going to jump right into it and get your thoughts. Hope you enjoyed the interview. Dropping out this week, Edward Waters Tigers, the magic kind of ran out on them. They failed this past weekend. They fall to five and four, five and three. Also falling out was the Miles Golden Bears, which probably shocked most folks, especially not just they lost, but the way they lost, they fell to six and three, five and two. Receiving votes, though, Miles Golden Bears are still in the mix, six and three. Just outside of top seven at five and two. Johnson C. Smith, Golden Bulls, continues to have a strong season as they improve to six and three, five and two. And then you have the Florida Memorial Lions that jump into the top 10 essentially at five and three, four and one. That being said, let's get into the top seven. With the top seven, at number seven, we have Fort Valley State Wildcats that are seven and two, six and one, 129 points. They were not ranked last week. At number six, you have Tuskegee Golden Tigers, seven and two, six and one, 138 points, as they also were not ranked. Jumping into the top five, number five, Fayetteville State Broncos out of the CIAA, seven and two, seven and zero, oh, as they continue to roll and get it done, 140 points. At, at number six, that's the Fayetteville State Broncos, the only team that beat Virginia Union thus far this season, if you would. But number four, you have the Allen Yellow Jackets that just continue to have a magical season. They have a tough matchup this week. We'll talk about that a little later. But at this point, they're 7-2 overall in the season and 5-2 and in the conference race. 144 points. They do move up a spot this week. Let's get into the top three. Top three are CIAA heavy, especially out of the Virginia. Speaking about Virginia, number three, we have Virginia State Trojans. 8-1 and one overall, 6-1 and one in the race, 163 points. They move up a spot from number three, and they face – Guess who this week? The other Virginia school at number two. That's Virginia Union Panthers sitting at eight and one and six and one. Same identical records, 180 points. Remain number two. They create a winner take all this weekend. Boy, I tell you, two versus three matchup for the Northern Division of the CIAA and representative in the CIAA championship game. Doesn't get much better than that. At number mm -hmm. one, you have the Benedict Tigers. All they do is win. Nine and oh, seven and oh. Nine first place votes, <coughs> unanimous number one for the second week in a row, 189 points. They remain the number one. With that being said, Charles, what are your thoughts in terms of poll ranking mid-major style in week number eight? 
it's the shocker for me, the the team that fell out. Uh, I, well, I, I have no clue what happened to Miles this past weekend, but uh, when I saw the score, I, I did a double take just like I did with Virginia State the, the week prior. Like, eh, it's a misprint. I could not believe it, but uh, uh, kudos to Albany State. Bro. That was a huge win, but like you said, Dr. Will, uh, this upcoming week, uh, you got a showdown, and that's what you, uh, this time of the year, you live for these showdowns, especially uh, to see who wears a crown and CIAA looking forward to it. Great point, and I can give you a little more insight on that. It was not bad beats, but a bad break, and I don't mean a literally break, but essentially first play of the game, quarterback gets hit, Ah. And it was tough. Concussion. He was out for the rest of the game. And essentially, so were the Miles Golden Bears. So one of those things makes it tough. Um, and it's unfortunate because they were in the race for the second division. Now they need a lot of help. With that being said, let me go to Brandon and let me get his thoughts on the mid-major division. Uh, poll rankings in week number eight. What are your thoughts, Brandon? Um, I looked through it and, you know, there was – there was nothing that I could kind of really take exception with. Um, <clears throat> you know, going back to the miles, thing, anytime you take a beating like that, um, you're going to fall several spots in their case out of the rankings. Um, like, and, and to follow up on what Charles said, I did not see them getting beat to that degree um, because just kind of looking at Albany State, they hadn't really shown the ability to put up points like that. Uh, really that much this season. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it was really a surprise. Uh, I do know their quarterback ended up getting named Box Toro, uh National Player of the Week off of that performance. Um, so kudos to to uh, to what Coach Gray is doing down in Albany State. But outside of that, uh, the, the rest of the list pre seemed pretty solid. Yeah. I said that so, so y'all invite me back. So the list was solid. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say, I didn't even tease this year, but you learned fast. I like this. <laughs> yeah, you will continue to come back. Uh, you know what you're doing. Uh, unlike Mike Washington, as he's gone on assignment, he gets in here and gets to talking a little too much, and I have to turn off his mic. But much love to Mike <laughs> since he's out there pre preparing for homecoming to make sure when I get down there, it all looks right. But that Is being the said, what the campus run? run? Huh? Yeah, he gets yeah, yeah. campus run. All right. Campus run, this is, you know, he's got to get it right. Don't want yeah, to drop yeah, a sweat. Yeah. <laughs> With that being said, we'll come back on the other side, and we're going to get into some of these mid matchups that we alluded to at the top rankings. So stick with us. We'll be right back after these breaks. It's never too early to plant the seed, to share the tradition, and instill a sense of pride in your HBCU with your little ones. HBCU Pride and Joy Children's Boutique helps you share your school spirit with a wide selection of adorable kids apparel and accessories officially licensed from your favorite HBCU. Visit HBCUPrideJoy.com and follow us on all social media at HBCUPrideJoy on Facebook and Twitter. all pads are exactly the same think again this is always ultra thins reinvented with the always triple protection system this pad wicks gushes 90 percent faster absorbs even more so you can feel dry and locks odors in rethink your pad for up to 100 percent leak free and odor free comfort with the totally reinvented always ultra thins this is always like never before Thank you guys for what you do for HBCU Athletics. This is a fantastic avenue for, for, for all of us. This is our ESPN, so we, 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 we love what you guys do. Brian, AD, Roy, all you guys at BCSN, we really appreciate what it is that you guys, you guys do for us. Ryan Fulford, 
A.D. Drew and I are co-hosts of the BCSN Sports Wrap. We talk about all things related to HBCU athletics. From the games, teams, coaches, and fan interest stories, we cover it all. You can find our shows on Facebook at BCSN Sports Wrap, YouTube at MyJBN Online, and everywhere you listen to podcasts like Anchor, Spotify, Google, and Apple Podcasts. You can also find the show on the Jericho Broadcast Network's app. Make sure to download. We look forward to you joining the conversation and being a part of the show. Compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they're going to tell you if your team, if they want to love you. Yeah. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor Yes Sir yes, and pay attention because he's going to teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Mills inside the HBC Sports Lab. Let's get into these mid major games of the week. We'll start with the classic and then the independent game of the week. Uh, the classic game is a top matchup between a couple of the teams. Remember, we will give you a breakdown on Thursday on the SIC and CIAA games, which feature top 10 matchups all over the board. In fact, there's so many, we'll actually give you a bonus game to look at on Thursday. With that being said, let's get into it with this classic game of the week at the mid-major level, Columbus, Georgia. Fountain City Classic at uh, Memorial Stadium there. Number seven for Valley State Wildcats, seven and two. Six and one, and they take on Albany State, Golden Rams, five and four, five and two. Albany State had a big win, even though they just said five and four. Uh, it should be interesting. A lot of implications on the line, depending on what takes place. Both teams want the win to give them chance, give themselves a chance in terms of playing in the championship game. Both of them need a little help. With that being said, uh, I have Albany State in my overall ranking index at number thirteen. Charles, what are your thoughts in terms of this classic matchup between perennial rivals out of the SIEC? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is going to be a great matchup. I'm looking forward to it. And normally when you think about Fort Valley, you think about Kevin Durham and his past uh, and this uh, Fort Valley State offense. But number one uh, in the SIEC in rush is Brandon Marshall from Fort Valley State. He's going for almost five yards a pop, eight touchdowns on the season, almost rushing for 100 yards a game. I think that is what Fort Valley State is going to uh, – carry with this rushing game to get this win over Albany State. I'm looking for Fort Valley and Albany State. I'm looking for Fort Valley W, but it'll be close. I'm looking at somewhere probably 24 to 14, something to that effect. But I got Fort Valley to get to W. Thank you when you talk about that. This game is on ESPN Plus. Uh, Columbia, Columbus, Georgia, Bragg Memorial Stadium, 1 o'clock Central Standard Time, Fort Valley, the Wildcats, Albany State Golden Rams. Brandon, what do you think about the mid-major football out of the SIEC? Well, this is this is a game, like I said, I grew up going to and watching and whatnot. So <clears throat> you look at uh Charles touched on some good points that I was I was gonna make himself, but it's all good. <laughs> I great minds think alike. Yeah. Um but when you, you look at it, like I said, with uh with Albany State, I think it's definitely it's going to come down to the Fort Valley rushing game and how Albany State can defend that. Um, their Albany State is allowing on average about 142 yards uh, of rushing per game. Um, so if if that that holds, if they just hold up to that, they're still going to be in trouble. I still, when when it comes to the Golden Red, I don't think that they can score enough. I know that they're. Offensively speaking, they're, they're sixth in the SIAC at 27 points a game. Um, and I think they had some help with the 48 spot that they put up last week uh, against Miles. <laughs> so I think uh, – I just don't think offensively they have enough. The defense has been playing fairly well for the most part this season. Um, I just think uh, that they just don't have quite enough offense. I know uh, their quarterback is coming off a strong performance. Um, and even if you look at it historically, uh, Albany State's won eight out of the last 11, four out of the last five. And out of that, they've won a combined score of 173 to 21. Um, but with that being said, I think that uh, Fort Valley will get them. Uh, I think it's going to be, you're looking at probably about 31 to 17 is, is how I would, would plot that out. Yeah, he does his work, dude. Charles, you see him dropping scores. Good job. That's, that's, that's what you want. A little history yeah. in there. 
growing up, who did you follow? Did you have a root in Israel that says you followed this and went to the game back in the day? Well, yeah, I'm from Albany. So okay. there you go. I grew up, you know, going to all the the Golden Rams games back when they before they had an on campus stadium. Pre flood nice. even. So there you go. Good stuff. Let's get into this independent matchup mid major. Florida Memorial Lions taking on Thomas Knight Hawks. You know, that's over there where uh, A.D. Drew works. The fight A.D. Uh, Drews. Yeah, fight A.D. Drews. They need a little help in this matchup. Thomasville, Georgia, they are at home. Venice Memorial Stadium, Saturday, November 4th, 11 a.m. That's 12 noon, high noon, Eastern time. Number 10, Florida Memorial Lions, 5-3, 4-1. They're trying to stay in the race in terms of that tough, tough, Conference they over in the Sun Conference, and then you have Thomas Thomas Knights that get getting it going, starting the program, uh, one and six, one and four overall. Let me stick with you, Brandon King. What are your thoughts in terms of this non-conference matchup with the HBCU program, the Florida Memorial Lions, trying to get it done in the Sun Conference? I think the Nighthawks are going to have their hands full. Their Nighthawk defense having to. They got to deal with a, a Florida Memorial offense that's, that's averaging 40 a game, um, which <laughs> is funny. That's not that doesn't even lead the Sun Division. Uh, St. Thomas is the number one scoring team at 43.3. That's that's a freebie for the folks at home. Um, but they're going to get it. They're going to win. I think they're going to win with their running. game. So <clears throat> if you look at the, the Sun Conference out of the top 10 rushers, Florida Memorial has three of them out of the top 10. They average 270 yards a game, and I think they're going to use that rushing game to just overwhelm the Nighthawks. So uh, the Lions are going to win this one going away. They'll, they'll, it'll be about 45 to 7. I don't think it'll be that close. Poor Drew. Poor Drew. <laughs> Keep the motivation. We gave him some <laughs> love, though. Charles, what are your thoughts in terms of this matchup? Yeah, Florida Memorial, they're experiencing a rebirth uh, in terms of uh, their football program. Uh, tremendous season, 5-3, and 4-1 and one in the Sun Conference. Uh, players of the week on the offensive and defensive side of the ball. We talk about Saquon Smith, huge game. Uh, Program-defining win over Southeastern, first time in their uh, program. They knocked off Southeastern last week. So they got a lot of momentum going into this game, taking on uh, Thomas Nighthawks, uh, you got to go Florida Memorial on this. And, and like Graham said, it's that running game uh, that's really going to take over. And you can bludgeon a team on the ground. That says a lot. So I, I got Florida Memorial big in this one. Got them running all over the Hawks, the Nighthawks. Man, I tell you, unfortunately, they're not playing at night. But that being <laughs> said, we're going to take our next mm-hmm. break, come back on the other side. We're going to give the top seven for the major division, close out uh, with – those games of the weeks is just getting interesting. We know they close things out in the Eastern Division, but in the Western Division, boy, we got a big one over there to see who's going to get the edge and find a way of can they tie up the Western Division. Uh, we'll get into that in a little bit. But with that being said, we'll speak with some independent programs. Tennessee State is rolling. Find a way in one top 25 poll. They ranked in there. We'll see where they ranked in mid-major division right after this break. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service. Slowburn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website, www.slowburnwaco.com. That's www.slowburnwaco.com. T. Madden & Associates is a sophisticated and experienced law firm located in your neighborhood. We're turning injury to cash. T. Madden & Associates obtained almost $2 million for my injury. They turned my injury to cash. Now, we can't guarantee how much your injury is worth, but we've recovered millions for our clients. Call T. Madden & Associates at 833-PAID-123. That's 833-PAID-123. you're looking for the latest information on Southern University Sports, the Southwestern Athletic Conference, and HBCU Athletics, there's only one place to go. Tune in to the Carlos Brown Show, exclusively on the Black College Sports Network. There's a shot. It's it's a might be. It could be. It could be. Right field. Grand slam. No. 
What a shot! That's how you get hot, young fella. Thank you guys for what you do for HBCU athletics. This is a fantastic avenue for, for, for all of us. This is our ESPN, so we, 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 we love what you guys do and all you guys at BCSN. We really appreciate what it is that you guys, you guys do for us. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir. And pay attention, cause he gon' teach a lesson. This is Dr. Mills inside the HBCU Sports Lab. We had two professors, Professor Bishop and Professor King. With that being said, let's get into the major division football poll ranking week number nine. See if uh, some things have changed. We had two big matches last week with the number one and two team. Thursday night, we had a show out. Then Saturday night, we had another show out. Can the family rallies hold on to number one? We shall see because we did have one team drop out this week. The Alabama a and Bulldogs could not get it done in the Magic City Classic. We'll see what that looks like. With that being said, let's look at those teams receiving votes. Grand State Tigers, top Receiving vote get up with the 169 points. They're at four and four, three and two. Still in the thick of things in the Western Division of the SWAC. At number nine, essentially, is Hampton Pirates sit at four and four, two and three. They got a big win over AT in the Coastal Athletic Association, formerly known as the Colonial CAA, 150 points. They right the ship after several losses the past couple of weeks. And behind them, Howard Bison. They did get that win over Howard, though. Howard is winning as they got in the MEAC play. They're 2-0, 4-4 overall. Can they get it done this week to keep the hopes alive in terms of the MEAC and set up a matchup of undefeated the following week against North Carolina Central? We shall see. It'll be interesting. 147 points, but let's get where it gets good. Top seven programs this week in week number nine. At number seven. We have Southern Jaguars, 5-3 and three on the season, 4-1, and one, 177 points. They were previous ranked 5, so they, although they won, they dropped two spots. It was a close one. They had to come from behind. But in the win column, where it's most importantly, they got the W over Texas Southern Tigers at home. At number 6, Alabama State Hornets, 4-3, and 3-2, three, three and 178 points. They were not ranked. They jumped into the polls. They jumped all the way in at number 6. They jump over Southern. Remember, they did have that victory at the very beginning of the season. So they're in at number six. Bringing us to number five, the Alcorn State Braves, five and three, four and one, 191 points. They move up a spot quietly. Is there such thing quietly as being four and one, five and three? Not no more. Uh, right now, <laughs> the victory this week, I think the noise will ramp up quite right and deservedly <laughs> so. Bringing us to number four. Jackson State Tigers are six and three, four and two, 192 points. They stay at number four. All they do in Jackson is win, and that's what they continue to do. At number three, Tennessee State Tigers, Brandon King, your Tigers are back in the football business. Six and two, two and one, squarely in the big style OVC race <laughs> for the top spot, 216 points. They've been there for a minute. We know you know about it. They're at number three, but they're still in the mix. At number two, this is where things change. We have a new number two this week. Florida a and Rallies fall from number one. They're at 71, 6 and 0. Five first place votes that just edged out by the number one team. And as you imagine, you know who it is. The Rattlers have 241 points. Big victory over FAMU. But it looks like the voters said North Carolina Central did just a little more. The previous champions or at it again. They climbed all the way to the number one spot in week number nine, North Carolina Central Eagles out of the mid. They improved to 7-1 in a dominant victory this past Thursday at 2-0, seven first-place votes. So they gained a first-place vote, which flips them all the way to number one, 246 points, just edging out FAMU 244. They going neck to neck. I know everybody else says the conference races are not done, and that's true, but in terms of the Rankings, can you imagine if these teams can hold on and face off in the Celebration Bowl? Boy, would it be a good one. A lot of football to be played. We'll see. But at this point, Central improves from two to one. 
I see Charles smiling, so I'm going to give him the privilege to go first and see what he's thinking. Let it out, Charles. Let it out. Style points. Style points the rest of the way here with uh, Fabio and North Carolina Central. Who has the better right cross? Who could put teams away quicker uh, than uh, North Carolina Central or Fabio? That's going to be an interesting look-see with one and two going down uh, the stretch. But we got some matchups this weekend. We got Southern. We got Alcorn. Oh, oh, oh that's going to be a good one. Looking forward to that game. Uh, wow. Saturday night in Baton Rouge, it, it strikes again. Uh, and it caught up to Texas Southern <laughs> Tigers this weekend. So can't say enough about that. Jackson State is probably playing uh, as consistent as anybody right now. Jacoby Morgan uh, at quarterback. They've really uh, found uh, a lot of life with regards to him playing quarterback. Uh, big win in the APB this weekend. But I tell you what, this is, this, is, this is what you want. This is where things start getting real interesting. Uh, November football is here, and this is where it gets a real fun, Doc. I can't argue with the poll this weekend, but I think things will just shake this, shake themselves out the rest of the way. Yeah. Charles, I'm glad you stumbled on that a little bit and talked about that five versus seven matchup that goes down and will be on ESPN Plus it's for the top of the Western Division, and somebody might get a chance to really put a little stranglehold on it. Obviously, you'll be out on assignment on Thursday. So you didn't get to talk about it in depth, but I'm glad that you put it out there. Folks understand that you know football, and that is going to be the place to be in terms of turning on your television this week. If you can't get down there, because we know the Braves and the Jaguar fans will be there loud and proud. Loud. <laughs> is the major word that we are stressing today, loud. With that being said, uh, I'm sure Southern – is bringing the band, the human jukebox. So we got another matchup there. That, takes some that should be a good one, too, as well. It's, it's getting a good time because you're talking about you only have one more chance to put your film on tape and send it over there uh, for that band matchup in terms of HBCU band. I talked to Grant. If you get a chance, go back and check out Brian and AD. It was a great show as they brought the co um directors on if you would in terms of managing that process and they break it down they really get into it a lot of good talk in terms of what it means you got one more you essentially gonna have your top five come out of that uh based on the next release and then you go down and you start to finalize and who's going to be the top four teams in the baby yeah. in the top four in the mid major this is important when you talk about these show matchups uh, more than one way treat yourself uh to go back on youtube because the juke went hard this weekend, this past weekend. That was that was it was more you 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 guys came through this weekend. That was that was tight. I enjoyed that show. Yeah, they made sure that they uh saw them pole rings fall out. He wanted to make another <laughs> thing he said, hey, our early demise has been greatly exacerbated. I, I hear you, human juke box. Shout out to Edwin. He told us they coming. Also, I want to give some love to the MIAC. This is two weekends in a row where they had the business. Isn't in band travel on Thursday for Good the job. ESPN matchup. Now, if you're mm -hmm. going to talk about your TV and brands going to be on there, yeah, you can complain, but you ask for TV when you get a chance. You got to show up and show out. They brought yeah. the bands, and then they had two subsequent band matchups outside of that on Saturday. Miak is figuring it out. They're getting the teams, they're getting the bands programs, and they're hitting the road. One thing that they haven't done in the past. So credit to the Miak in terms of showing out. With that being said, Brandon. I know you don't get a lot of the love in terms of the independent program. That's not your fault. Tennessee State is over there in the Big South OBC. <laughs> but they do play a couple of matchups. So they got some love and they got some band credit in there early. We'll see if it's enough. I'm interested in what band aristocrats going to send in. Obviously, the good thing for them, it's not about a band matchup. So don't have to worry about my poll rankings. HBC Sports, <laughs> Grammy and all, they'll get a chance to get it done. With that being said, more importantly, what are your thoughts on my top seven major division ranking? Well, I can say it looks pretty good this week. Now, next week, it, it, it has a potential to be in shambles after what hap what might happen this weekend. But, uh, <laughs> you know, start, you know, true, when you true, hit Southern. True. Obviously, you know, uh, as Charles alluded to, how you win matters. And uh, even when while winning is good, sometimes – in terms of, of, of poll rankings, ugly wins can can have ill effects in terms of, of rankings. But um, you look at, That's like true. I said, Alcorn, the, the quietest 4-1 SWAC team I think I've ever seen. 
You know, they, you know, they, they, they're just like that. They just go about their business with their lunch pail and their hard hat. They just go under the radar and they just keep winning. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, so I think before it's all said and done, uh, Fred McNair's bunch down there, they're going to have a say over, uh, over who comes out of, out of the swag. So, uh, obviously one and two, you know, we've been talking about them all year. They both went out and took care of business in, in rather decisive fashion. Uh, nice Tennessee state makes an, makes an appearance, you know, they're, they're, uh, one of the hottest teams in HBCU football. So, uh, oh no, I thought the list was solid and let me, I, I just want to want to say this before we, we wrap on the polls. I know on, on Sunday, Reverend professor, uh, Sims was running some smack on my tigers saying we didn't want to see them. I'm just gonna say this. That's not a challenge we would back down from. So ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm just gonna put that out there. <laughs> really? So, you know what the hey, look, I like look, that. I like this. Stay back in the talking business. Look at this. <laughs> oh, yeah, they're back in the talking business. They must be playing <laughs> smack business. football over there. Uh -huh. I was gonna yeah. add this since you brought it up. I ain't gonna do that. It would be interesting if part of that six and two was the fact that they were six and zero oh in the swack or seven and zero oh in the swack. And then you had a game coming up like uh, next week that featured FAMU at Tennessee State Ooh. for a divisional championship to go to celebration. Ooh. That would be a little interesting, but no, uh, not to be. With that being said, let's go to the break before I make the people <laughs> mad and break the internet. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take our last break. We'll come back on the other side and talk about some of these independent and classic matchups that we have going down this week. Stick with us for our last break. We'll come back on the other side, close things out. You see, Head & Shoulders has scalp shield technology, protects against flakes even between washes. It's never not working. Kind of like us. We're never not working. Number 15? That's my rub. Ooh, nice. Never not working. Never, ever, never, ever not working. Welcome everybody to Juneau, Alaska. I don't like this one. Me neither. Let's get out of here. Dandruff protection that's never not working. Head and shoulder scalp shield technology. Charmin Ultra Soft has so much cushiony softness, it's hard for your family to remember. They can use less. Sweet pillars of softness. This is soft. Holy Charmin. Oh, excuse me. Roll it back, everybody. Sorry. Charmin Ultra Soft is so cushiony soft, you'll want more. But it's so absorbent, you can use less, so it's always worth it. Now, what did we learn about using less? You gotta roll it back, everybody. <laughs> we all go. Why not enjoy the go with Charmin? For 200 years, Montgomery, Alabama has been making history by people who had the courage to stand up for change. Today, this riverfront city has been reborn, embracing the past and looking forward to the future. From the National Memorial for Peace and Justice to the stage of the Alabama Shakespeare Festival. This is where history was and is made. We are proud to call Montgomery home, and together we can be the change. I'm returning to Clinton Paris, and Tampa's my community. I grew up here, went to school here, and my wife and I make our home here. What makes Tampa special are its people. So when I represent someone injured in my community, it's personal. Call my office and speak to a real lawyer and not some referral service. I will fight the insurance companies to get the settlement that you deserve. At the law office of Clinton Paris, we take the pain out of being hurt. It's press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they're going to tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah, and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor Yesa yes, and pay attention because he's going to teach a lesson. Yes. <laughs> this is Dr. Bill inside the HBC Sports Lab. Let's get into our major division games of the week, starting with the major division classic game. It's in Mobile, Alabama. Lad People Stadium, Port City Classic is what they call it, uh, going on this week, where you have a number eight, Grandma State, uh, four and four, three and two. Uh, playing pretty good football as they've wrapped things up and got it going back in the right direction. And then number six, Alabama State Hornets. That people are really excited about it, starting slowly. People are not talking as much trash now. The Hornets are rolling, four and three, three mm -hmm. and two. They've gotten some big victories in the Eastern Division. 
Uh, with that being said, I'm going to go to you, Charles. What are your thoughts in terms of this top 10 matchup between number six, Alabama State, hosting Grambling State in Mobile, Alabama? Tremendous matchup. But when you take a look at it, uh, this is going to be a classic offense versus defense sort of matchup. When you take a look at it, uh, Grambling State, they are the number two ranked offense in the SWAC. Uh, they're putting up 30 points a game in the SWAC. And to me, it, you take a look at, at taking on this Alabama State defense, third ranked defense in the SWAC, but uh, it's a bear trying to run on Alabama State. So this game is going to rest on the arm of Miles Crawley. Uh, if he is effective and is not uh, turning the ball over, I think Gramlin has more than enough offense to win because I just think Alabama State, they're going to crowd the box. They're going to they're not going to allow uh, guys like Floyd Chalk uh, to beat them. It's, this is going to have to be a Miles probably than the Rash type game. So I got Gramlin, but just by a little bit in this. It's going to be a low scoring game. Uh, they got to at least get to 20 points. So I got Gramlin 20, Alabama State 14 in this one. Ooh, interesting, interesting call. So Grambling keeps it tight in the West, keeps them all on the edges, it looks like you're saying. Let me go to you, Brandon. What are your thoughts in terms of this top 10 matchup? Number eight, Grambling State, four and four, three and two, won the last couple of games, and then Alabama State as well. So both of these teams are playing pretty good football. Offensively, uh, Grambling has probably slipped just a little bit, uh, but their defense is playing much better as well. On the other side, Alabama State's offense has improved some. The defense is still lights out. I want to know what your thoughts in terms of this Port City Classic matchup. I think it's definitely going to uh, – one, well, one of the factors will be the, the grambling defense uh, going up against that, that Alabama State offense. Um, that sometimes, you know, they've been kind of up and down. They're, <clears throat> they're, on, they're not even averaging 20 points a game. They're eighth in the swag at 19.3 points per game. Um, mm. So, you know, looking looking at that, uh, will they be able to to generate enough offense on the improved grambling defense uh, to actually win the game? I, I do agree with Charles. I think it's definitely going to come down to, to Crowley. Um, if he can, you know, not kind of get too hyped because of who he's going against once again, uh, some some old mates, I'm sure. Uh, if he can, you know, stay with within himself and not turn the football over, um, and 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 play at the, the level he has largely uh, throughout the season, uh, I think he gives Grambling an excellent chance to win. I think that it's more likely that Grambling will score enough to win the game than mm -hmm. Alabama State's offense will explode enough for them to to get the W. So. I think it will be a, a hard-fought game. Um, I would say twenty-four to seventeen. It won't. No, nobody's getting thirty in this. Mm. I can see that very well. But that being said, let's go to our independent matchup and what Brandon's been waiting for: <laughs> North Charleston, South Carolina Buccaneer Field, number three Tennessee State Tigers, as we just unveiled, six and two on the season, two and one. In the conference race, they're on the road at Charleston Southern Buccaneers that are three and five overall and just one and two in the race. This one is on ESPN, three o'clock Central Standard Time. Brandon, what are your thoughts about the Fighting Tigers? Your Tigers are back in the football business. Can they hold on and get it done and keep the momentum moving forward? I think they, they've got to come out and, and take care of business uh, against this Charleston Southern team. They're a uh, they're a triple option attack, which is not mm -hmm. something that, you know, you typically see a lot. So they've got to be uh, prepared for that. Um, if you look at Charleston Southern by the numbers, offensively, they don't, they're not exactly potent. Um, they're averaging yeah, about 14, right under 14, well, right under 15 point, 14 point eight points per game. But they're allowing about 32 points a game. Um so the thing for, for them, the, the, the TSU defense will have to stay disciplined and stay in their lane and just not allow that, uh, that triple option to chew them up all day. Um, defensively, uh, I think the, the Tennessee State defense, I think they act, they're, they're the unit that has played consistently the best all mm. season long. Yeah. Um, you know, with the whole – Flip, switching with the quarterbacks and, and things of that nature. The offense has been kind of up and down. 
there's been a lot of issues um, as far as overall consistency, but the defense has been that that one factor. Uh, even last week against Lindenwood, they gave a, co- a couple cheap touchdowns in the second half. Uh, but that first half, they were they were absolutely lights out. Um, Terrell Allen is 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 playing just dominant football right now. He's had uh, ten sacks over his last three games, um, and the past three weeks, he has he's won either shared or outright won the conference defensive player of the week award, and he's leading the nation in sacks at the FCS or the FBS level. Um, so if they if he continues to to play the way he has, um, and and that defense continues to to play uh, how they, they they've been playing all year, uh, Tennessee State should have enough to to get the win over over. Uh, Coach G, the, the former Albany State coach, who's now the head man at Charleston Southern. Mm, good point. I forgot that he did move over there uh, to go back uh, to his alma mater, get the job there, and see what he can do. So it's be intriguing matchups. Coach Eddie Jordan doesn't have to worry about attendance this week after he's been at the conference hall in the last three weeks. <laughs> he's on the road. He continues to make statements, though, in regards to how well his football team is playing. So much credit to what the t- Tigers are doing good football being played up there yeah. in Nashville. With that yeah. being said, Charles, what are your thoughts in terms of this matchup? And a defense shall lead them. I think this is going to be a huge game for Tennessee State's defense. I'm going to echo Brandon on this. Uh, this has to be a big game for guys like James Green, Monroe Beard, uh, those guys, Terrell Allen, uh, in terms of uh, uh, taking on this triple option. And big thing with triple option, everybody knows, no guess, you know, hit who you're supposed to hit. There's no secret about that. And other than Colton Bubba Adams, uh, Tennessee State's linebackers are two of the illest linebackers, I think, in in, in HBCU football. When you're talking about James Green, Monroe, Monroe Beard, a good stat, Tennessee State has had uh, seven Big South OBC players of the week honors this season. Five of those weeks uh, has, has come from the defensive side of the ball. So they're playing lights out on that side of the ball. I think Tennessee State gets the W, and they continue the momentum. Good stuff there, Charles, when you talk about the matchup there in North Charleston. Be interesting as they get going. Uh, Eight-hour trip over there to uh, North Charleston. Uh, Eight hours and 18 minutes to be exact, uh, at least according uh, to the Google Maps out there. With that being said, let's get out of here. I want to say thank you for listening to Inside the HBC Sports Lab. Make sure you share our podcast with your friends and colleagues. I am Dr. Kenyatta Kabil, the Dean of HBC Sports coming from inside the lab in the College of HBCU Sports with Mike Watch and Charles Bishop. Uh, make sure you check us out on Sunday as we have B.J. Jones, Joshua Sim Sr., and A.D. Drew join us uh, as we close up and give you all your notes and needs. But before that, we'll do it again on Thursday, bring it up. Make sure you share and get some love. Continue to go to hbcsports.com. Check out Brandon King where you can get all his information. Follow him on Twitter as well as he will give you the latest and greatest. And make sure – you have all your inside information on HBCU sports in general. Specifically, he'll certainly make sure you get your news on Tennessee State as he gets all that information to you. Again, we want to thank you for listening to Dr. Bill's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop every Tuesday and Thursday at 6 o'clock Central Standard Time. Again, Sunday at 9. We look forward to Thursday as we give you a little news. I'll be on the road. I'll be in New Orleans uh, at the NAS Conference. But I'll get on there and make sure we give you some updates and get the show going. Charles will be out, but we'll have some folks bringing in here. It looks like we will be giving you some good love with the CIAA SIE as we're going to bring SIEC, I should say. We we'll have Stephen Gaither come in here and give us some updates of what's going on in the CIAA. We we'll have AD Drew, the specialist there, giving you some information on the uh, SIEC with those key matchups. Uh, of those games that in a lot of ways going to determine who's going to be playing in those championship races. With that being said, again, I want to say thank you. Look forward as we continue to give you great news at HBCU. Special thanks to Brandon King coming here and dropping the knowledge, doing what he does, continue the great work. Follow me, Dr. Kenyatta Cavill, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. as D-R-K-E-N-Y-A-T-T-A-C-A-D-I-L. For all those uh, celebrating or entertaining Halloween, Happy Halloween to you. Stay safe. Uh, inside the HBC Sports Lab 1 on Twitter. That's Inside the HBC Sports Lab 1 on Facebook and YouTube. Again, I'm dressed like the professor. 
So I'm in doing it big. Dream big. Continue to move forward. We will talk with you soon. Charles? Horse. Brandon? Lecture. Dismiss. Man, he get an A plus. Brandon, <laughs> A plus. <laughs>